Good morning, I've got my first cup of coffee, about halfway done, but if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Nine Figures Keen at the end of yesterday, well, yesterday was a very exciting day for spoilers, so make sure you check that one out. But I'm sure today is going to be just as exciting, if not more, because right now we've got a brand new spoiler on Byram? Miram? Sorry, okay, that was less dramatic than I was hoping because yeah, I'm not really good at pronouncing these names, but Myram, let's go with that. So what does Myram do? Well, let's jump into it. Nope, I changed my mind. Miram. Miram is what I'm going with. So first off, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. So Miram Sentinel Worm is a 6-6 Dragon Spirit with Flying and Ward 2 that costs 3 green, blue, red. So a dragon having flying obviously isn't all that surprising. Ward 2 is quite nice, just some nice additional protection there. But of course, on top of that, whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that creature is legendary. That is an incredibly powerful effect. I mean, even if you take out the legendary part that's already incredibly powerful, being able to get an extra token copy of a dragon you control, yeah, there are some really powerful dragons out there. But of course, that legendary part is in there, and my goodness is that powerful because, yeah, there are some very powerful legendary dragons out there, and now you can get copies of them as well. And of course, this is an ETB trigger, so yeah, there are ways, of course, to use and abuse this that we'll go through here in a bit. So yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a very popular dragon commander because, well, that is a really powerful effect. You are missing out on two colors in comparison to, you know, some of the other dragon tribal commanders out there that are all five colors. But yeah, we still have access to a ton of powerful dragons. And this effect, well, is just absolutely incredible. And of course, on top of that, and we'll go through some commanders here in a bit as well. Yeah, this is going to be a fantastic slam dunk card in basically any dragon tribal deck out there. But before we go into that, and before we talk about the cards that work well with this as a commander, a quick reminder. In the description below, there is a link to a list of cards that I'm talking about in this episode, because, well, when a new exciting commander like this one is spoiled, prices of certain cards that work well with it do tend to go up sometimes. So if you're looking to build around this commander, make sure you consider picking up some of these cards sooner rather than later. And of course, with that said, let's jump into the cards. So my first thought when I saw this commander was, well, yeah, let's just start doubling up on some powerful legendary dragons like, you know, Niv-Mizzet Perrin and Niv-Mizzet the Firemind and all the Niv-Mizzets. Okay, not all of them, but the ones that we can use. Niv-Mizzet Perrin says, this spell can't be countered. Flying, whenever you draw a card, Niv-Mizzet deals one damage to any target. And whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So, of course, that is already incredibly powerful on its own. I mean, not on its own, but, you know, having one copy of it. But once you've got two copies of this, that's ridiculous. Because now every single time one player casts an instant or a sorcery, it does not have to be you, it can be anyone, you are going to be drawing two cards. And then you get to dish out one damage to any target four times. And... Again, that's for any instant or sorcery. It does not have to be yours. But yeah, if, every, if you cast an instant or sorcery, you're basically just like, you know, lightning bolt plus one on something. Or, you know, you can spread that damage out. And plus, you're cantripping twice. It's absurd. And of course, not quite as powerful, but still very powerful as well. Nimbus at the Fire Mind says, whenever you draw a card, Nimbus at the Fire Mind deals one image to any target. So again, that is still nice to double up on. And tap, draw a card. And I don't even want to think about the, the crazy amount of damage that you could do if you get both of these and their token copies out at the same time. Regardless, moving on, next up we've got Lathless Dragon Queen, a 6-6 dragon with flying that says, whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. And of course, by paying one in red dragons, you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So basically, fire breathing for your entire team. Now, there is a reason this one is legendary, because, yeah, that is a very powerful effect, but now, hey, cool, we get two copies of Lathless when it comes into play with our commander in play, and now, whenever we have any non-token dragon come into play, not only do we get a token copy of them thanks to our commander, but then we're also going to get two 5-5 five, five red dragon creature tokens with flying. So that is just, again, 10 additional free flying power. Have fun. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, of course, we've got plenty of ways that we can use and abuse these ETBs, so get ready for those. 
And also, get ready, well at least your opponent should, for Utvara Hellkite, a 6-6 dragon with flying, and whenever a dragon you control attacks, create a 6-6 red dragon creature token with flying. So, just by attacking with a singular dragon, it does not have to be, you know, non-token, any dragon, we are going to be getting two 6-6 flyers. So, this essentially just triples up our army every single combat. Good luck to your opponents, my goodness, all this just gets pretty crazy once you start doubling them. Speaking of which, yeah, let's double up our mana as well with things like Clouth, Unrivaled Ancient, and Old Gnawbone. Cloud is a 4-4 flying in haste, and when it attacks, you would X mana in any combination of colors or X the total power of attacking creatures. Spend this mana only to cast spells until end of turn, you don't lose this mana steps and phases end. So, again, Clouth on its own is already incredible. Flying haste can swing right away, make you a ton of mana. Again, with all these dragons, you're gonna have an absurd amount of power on the board, but again, you're doubling up your dragons, essentially doubling up your power, and then also you're getting two Clouth triggers because you've got two Clouths, so that's just, uh, you're gonna be able to cast your entire hand very easily, and then just get even more crazy things in play. Like, you know, Old Gnawbone, a 7-7 flying dragon that says whenever a creature you control deals comedy to a player, create that many treasure tokens. Getting this twice is, uh, you're going to have just, just every treasure in the world. Every single treasure is yours. Every single treasure token that has ever existed in Magic, just get them all into play because that's exactly what's going to happen by doubling up that effect. I mean, even just on their own, let's just say, you know, okay, you get all knob bone in play and you get a token copy of it, even if you're just swinging with those two. That is going to be 14 damage in total, and of course, each of those old knob bones see that, so that is 28 treasures from one card. Okay, one card and a token copy of it, but literally, it is pretty absurd. And of course, there are plenty of other examples of, you know, ways to give you more tokens, get more mana. I mean, Dragon Brood Mother, Savage Vent Maw, to name a few. Dragon Brood Mother is a 4 4 flyer that says at the beginning of each upkeep, put a 1 1 red and green dragon creature token with flying and devour 2 into play. So keep in mind, obviously, this is an upkeep trigger for everyone's upkeep, not just your own. And, and yeah, I mean, you are going to be doubling this up with a token copy of this. So you're going to get all the tokens. That's eight tokens in each trip around the table. And then Savage Vet Maul is just a solid creature, a 4-4 flyer that has, when it attacks, you add red, 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 green, 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 until end of turn you don't lose this mana steps and phase zen. So yeah, I mean, just swing with two of these because you get a token copy of it and get 12 mana to spend on some more lovely dragons. Like, you know, maybe some dragons that can dish out a ton of damage, like Thunderbreak Regent, Scourge of Alcus, and, and yeah, the very, very expensive Terror of the Peaks. Thunderbreak Regent says whenever a dragon you control becomes the target of a spell or ability opponent controls, Thunderbreak Regent deals 3 damage to that player. 3 damage is already a good deterrent, but now having 2 of these in play, that is 6 damage if they decide to ever target your dragons. Good luck to them. And especially good luck to them if you get Scourge of Valkus in play. Whenever it or another dragon enters Valkus under your control, deals X damage to any target where X is the number of dragons you control. So, getting a token copy of this is going to obviously double up on that trigger. And then also, again, this does not specify, you know, non-token dragons. So essentially, hey, whenever you get a dragon into play, your commander copies it, and then you get that trigger essentially, what, four times essentially? You know, two for each dragon? Have fun. And especially have fun with Terror of the Peaks. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So this is basically a War Storm Surge, but on a body, and yeah, you get two of these. So basically, double War Storm Surge every single time a creature comes into play, and again, it does not specify non-token. So if you play a creature and it gets copied, you're essentially dishing out four times as much damage as its power. Yeah, your opponents aren't going to last long. And really quick, of course, we've got some brand new dragons from this set. You know, it wouldn't be a Dungeons and Dragons set if we didn't have dragons, but yeah. Ones that can really help us out with this commander. Ganax, Astral Hunter, and Thrakus the Butcher. And again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing any of those names. Regardless, Ganax says, whenever another dragon enters Valfit on your control, create a treasure token. So again, you get two copies of this, which is just lovely because now whenever a dragon comes into play, we get two treasure tokens. But of course, again, this does not specify non-tokens. So every single time we get a dragon into play, again, we are getting a token copy of it, and then we get four treasures for doing so. So for a lot of our dragons, we can get most of their mana back just by doing that. And then Thrakus helps out in a different way. It says whenever it attacks, double the power of each dragon you control until end of turn. So of course, getting a token copy this means we can get that trigger twice. So double power, double power, 
Oh my goodness. I mean, this is just... Quadruple your dragon's power. Things can get pretty crazy when you start getting token copies of everything, especially legendary creatures. And like I mentioned earlier, of course, there are ways to use and abuse these ETBs because, again, our commander does not specify, you know, enters the battlefield if it was cast. No, it just says enters the battlefield. So, yeah, let's use blink spells. Essence Flux is a fantastic one. It costs a blue. It says exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its own control if it's a spirit, put a plus one counter on it. That spirit part is, you know, nice. It actually can work with our commander, but that's really not all that necessary because we really just care about blinking our creatures so we can get another token copy of it. I mean, just imagine getting an extra copy of Gnawbone or getting an extra copy of, you know, niv Mizzet Parent. This is ridiculous. And speaking of ridiculous, let's get two creatures, you know, ET being again for more copies of Ghostly Flicker. It says exile two target artifacts, creatures, and our land you control and return those cards to battlefield under your control. Yeah, that's well worth the three mana to essentially get two copies of our dragons. And of course, there is a repeatable way to do this with a Conjurer's Clause. It says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So essentially, this is basically a free, hey, let's just copy one of our non-token dragons. Yep, this is powerful. But of course, we can also copy our copies with Druid's Deliverance and Selesnia Uologist, which utilize, pro I almost said proliferate, populate. Sorry, it's early. Anyways, Druid's Deliverance and Incense says prevent all common damage will be dealt to you this turn. Populate. So for two mana, we can be like, oh, okay, you're swinging at me, um, Fog? And then I'll get a copy of my Nibmizit Parent token. Thank you. And then Selesnia Uologist is a great repeatable way to populate by paying two and a green Exaltar creature card from your graveyard, then populate. Although this is a centaur druid, yeah, we'll let her join our dragon team because sure, it doesn't have to be fully dragon tribal because this is basically like, hey, let's pay three mana, get rid of any creature from a graveyard. Again, that can be, you know, against an opponent as well. You know, if they've got, you know, say a self mill deck or a reanimator deck, sorry, uh, getting rid of some of your great creatures. And um, yeah, I'm going to get even more of my great creatures. Now, of course, outside of it being a commander, this brand new dragon spirit legend can be a fantastic part of pretty much any dragon tribal deck out there that can utilize it. I mean, the Ur Dragon is obviously the first one that came to my mind. It has eminence as long as it's in your command zone or on the battlefield. Other dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast as a 10-10 flyer. And of course, on top of that, whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand on the battlefield. Yeah, this is an absurdly just fantastic dragon tribal commander. And getting a second copy of it when it comes into play is just hilarious. And of course, again, the Ur Dragon reduces the cost uh, of Miram. So yeah, uh, have fun getting it out very early and then copying your dragons, including the Ur Dragon, and doubling up on that trigger. Yeah, this can get out of hand. Speaking of getting out of hand, how about Tiamat, which is a 7-7 flying dragon god that says, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, search your library for up to five dragons not named Tiamat that each have different names, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle. Yeah, I, I can definitely see uh, Miram being um, one of the first uh, of those five picks uh, because doubling up on your dragons is pretty absurd. Now, do keep in mind, this ETB trigger does specify that Tiamat needs to be cast, so you are not getting, you know, a doubling up of this trigger by making a token copy of it. You still get the token copy, which is nice for a 7-7 flying dragon god, but you don't get that ETB again because the token copy obviously is not cast. Next up, yeah, how about Scion of the Ur Dragon, a 4-4 dragon avatar with flying that has paid two search of life for a dragon permanent card, put it in your graveyard. If you do, Scion of the Ur Dragon comes a copy of that card until on turn, then shuffle your library. So you can definitely set yourself up for a huge turn. I mean, all you need to do is basically be like, okay, yeah, I'll just pay two, I'll uh, go get Miram, put it in my graveyard, and now whenever I get any of my dragons into play this turn, um, I'm just going to copy them. And finally, okay, I guess I could just keep naming, you know, all the Dragon Tribal Commanders, but I do want to point out Morophon. Morophon can be really good with this new card. Morophon is a 6-6 that has one enters battlefield, choose a creature type, in this case dragons. It tells the chosen type you cast, costs Wooburg glass to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Other creatures you control the chosen type get plus and plus one. So getting two copies of Morophon in play is quite hilarious. Your dragons all get plus two, plus two, and of course, on top of that, more importantly, your dragons now cost double Wooburg less to pay, less to cast. It's early. But yeah, this can reduce the cost even further for any of your dragons that, you know, have double of a mana symbol. And, and yeah, this can get really out of hand. But yeah, overall, I think a ton of players out there are going to be really excited. I mean, Dragon Tribal is one of the most popular tribes out there. I think it is the third most popular tribe out there. And, and yeah, 
there are a lot of powerful dragons and being able to double up on every single one of them including the legends is pretty absurd and of course on top of that this is going to be basically like a a must include i, I mean i i don't like saying must include or auto include but it's going to be really hard to argue against including this in any dragon tribal deck out there because this is basically like hey do you like twice as many of your dragons including your legendaries yes you do but of course a quick reminder that in the description below there is a link to list of cards i talked about on this episode so if you're excited about this commander make sure you check that link out and maybe consider picking up some cards sooner rather than later and of course make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers and with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.